Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. It's kind of windy and overcast outside, so I am going to do some soldering inside. And one of the things that I have been meaning to do ever since I left Wisconsin is figure out how to get rid of a big, huge honking brick of a soldering iron and shrink it down to something tiny. This is just the box. The soldering iron is even smaller than this. And I'm going to give it the hardest test I can think of. I'm going to make a fuse block. And the reason why I think this is a hard test is because this fuse block is going to be using very large traces, which is going to be a lot of heat dissipation. So let's get over and figure it out. Life in a small space. Many of you guys know I have moved into full-time RV lifestyle, and this used to be my soldering iron of choice, the FX888D. Fantastic soldering iron. I have done a tremendous amount of work with this, so much that I bought two of them. Here's where the concern comes in. Size. This is the size of this thing, which is the size of my workspace and power. It runs on AC power. So let's get this out of the way here because what we have next is this. This is the Pine Sill Smart Soldering Iron and it replaces all of that stuff you saw previously. The only thing I might worry about is a thing to hold it and something to clean it with, but they do make smaller versions of those things. Let's see what we get with the Pine Sill. We get that it's hard to get out of the box. There we go. Oh, that's tiny. That's even smaller than I thought it was. So there is the controller and this will run off of DC power or off of USB-C. And there is the soldering iron tip. And that slides in and then there are two little Phillips head screws to hold it in place. Okay, it does have a little rest on the bottom, which it looks like it's not even using. It looks like it's balancing on the green. Yep that will stop it from burning your mat. So there's a good amount of space there. And then all I need is a USB-C cord, which is not included, and a USB power supply. Here is the included owner's manual, and that text is super duper tiny. It actually looks ginormous on camera, so you can actually read it. That's fantastic. So you can see with the USB PD input voltages over here, how much power you can get with the different tips. They have a six ohm tip and an eight ohm tip. And you can get up to 92 watts at 24 volts with a 6 ohm tip. So that's, that rivals just about any soldering iron that's out there. This thing does have firmware updates. It runs Iron OS. Nice. And it is open source. That's even better. Some of the features of Iron OS. PID style temperature control. Automatic sleep with selectable sensitivity. Lift to wake support. Temperature boost mode. Temporarily increases temperature. Automatic LCD rotation. Support for PD, QC, and DC power options. And before we get into all of that, a real quick talk about solder. You, If you have not soldered before, if you have, you're probably just going to nod in agreement. And if you know something better than I do, please say something in the comments down below. But this is Kester, this is 6337 solder. It is rosin core, and I know I pronounce solder American. We'll just have to accept that. I have used about half of this roll. I got this, I wanna say 2019, 2018. And I have actually built and repaired several computers and built and repaired several radios. And I still have about half of this roll left. 6337 leaded solder is what you're gonna to wanna to use in order to make your life easier. Use some type of fume extractor to get the fumes out of the way, but if you use the lead-free solder, you will not like soldering. At the very least, start off with this, build up your skill set, and then switch over to lead-free solder if you're worried about it. But definitely, use a fume extractor to get the lead out of your face. Now, let's talk power supplies. You guys have seen this box before if you have been on the channel. This is a 50 caliber ammo can, and inside, I now have a 20 amp hour battery, but the important part of this is it accepts solar power input, or I can actually plug in any kind of 12 volt to 20 volt power source. And then it has two power poles on the side, a USB port over here, and I plug it in to the battery inside for charging, and we've got power. And because of the magic of these little circular dinguses here and these little brackets, I actually have USB PD, which is what we're gonna use for this, and QC 3.0 to charge a cell phone. There's a peek inside. I've got a video on this box and what's going on in here in the corner up there. So if you wanted to build one of these, you could. So I've got the power supply off to the right-hand side of the table because I am right-handed and I want the cord going that way. And now we've got something that we need to do. We need to actually solder something to test this thing out. These are some fuse kits that I made in the past and I sold these on the channel. And then because I'm on the road and the COVID-related part shortages, I stopped making and selling these. And I actually was able to get these down a size smaller. 
Since I stopped doing that, a friend of mine reached out to me and said, look what I did. And he's got his FB001 fuse block. So we're gonna put this together today on the channel. And there is some parts and some instructions and some fuse holders and everything else. Scan the QR code if you want some more info. And there will be links in the description down below as well. All right, here goes nothing. We have USB-C power plugged in and there's a bunch of buttons here. Feels like it's getting a little warm. Let's push some buttons and see what happens. We have the plus sign. Yep, she's still heating up and that's in Celsius and I don't know Celsius, but somewhere around 300 is where I wanna go. She's bouncing around trying to stay around 300 and it's set for 320 Celsius, okay. So I can change the temperature that way. Oh, it knows whether it's right side up or upside down. That's cool. You see how if I tilt it that way, it changes the display. And if I tilt it that way, it changes it back. And I'm starting to smell the, I'm starting to smell the heat. 320 Celsius is pretty close to what I normally run. Let's, let's just go with their recommendation. Nice little circuit board that came in the kit. Very straightforward instructions, pre-built power poles and four fuse holders. So we need to figure out what is the top side of the board and what is the bottom side of the board. I would assume this is the bottom side of the board because it will cover up everything if we build it the other way around. That looks pretty nice. I've got a trick for installing those when we get to it, but let's get these power poles installed first. And if I take this and I flip it over here, first off, it has a tough time fitting. Yeah, they both have a pretty tough time fitting, but you can, you can get them forced in there. It actually won't hurt anything because red crosses over to red, black crosses over to black and both sides are fused. So it's almost impossible to get this thing wrong, but we will try. And if this thing is built right, this is probably gonna be one of the hardest tasks that this soldering iron will ever have to do. I got it stuck there because power poles are rated at 45 amps. So there should be quite a bit of a ground plane going through here. And I'm gonna turn up the heat as a result of that. We're at 320, I'm gonna go up to 400. And I'm running off of a 20 amp hour bio NO battery. I'm not going up to 400, that seems like a lot. That seems pretty excessive. We're at 360. There we go. Now we're flowing. And that looks pretty good. Not bad for a USB powered soldering iron. Now my trick for getting these fuse holders installed, the ones that I used in my kit actually had a black base around them so they were already locked in place. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a fuse and I'm gonna take the highest heat rated fuse I have, which is 30. I mean, technically I do have these 52 rated fuses. And then the fuse will hold these things in place. And there's one in place. All right, and now the fuses and the fuse holders are all held in the right place. One of the things that happened is when I put this down, it has an accelerometer built in and it knew that I wasn't using it and it went to sleep. Look at it, she's just sleeping. So pretty. So when I pulled it up, I saw that it said Z, 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 Z on the screen and I waited for it to heat up again. But that's what our solder joints look like and this project is done. That looks pretty good. And we'll use my favorite multimeter to test this out. Nice. And this does auto ranging, but what I would like to do is I would like to put this into manual mode because it makes the continuity test that much faster. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen for beeps. And that's gonna tell us that this thing is working the way it should be. Okay, so red to red should beep. Yep, black to black should beep. Yep, and then red to black should not beep. Good job. Let's do these on top here because it'll be easier. Red to black, no beep. Red to black, no beep. Red to red, beep. Black to black, beep. And then let's test our fuses because we've got our tool here. And fuses test out fine, of course. 
There you go. If you enjoy seeing tiny spaces used for very large projects with very small devices, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more crazy stuff like this, because we will continue to do this. Now I've got a soldering iron solution, and I like it. There is definitely firmware updates available for this device. These fuse blocks also have a 3D printed case available for them so that you can protect all of those shiny parts from coming in contact with things you don't want them to come in contact with. Let's go see if we can break it. None of this is in the owner's manual. Let's see what happens. I'm going to hold down the plus key and I'm going to turn on the power. And we get PD debug, state 11, no V bus. State 20, no V bus. State 6, must have a V bus. Nope, no V bus. I'm going to push the button. PD mode 1, 5 volts, 3 amps. PD mode 2, 9 volts, 3 amps. PD mode 3, 12 volts, 3 amps. PD mode 4, 15 volts, 3 amps. PD mode 5, 20 volts, 2.25 amps. And then we're back to the state bus. So I hit the minus sign that time and I see numbers changing, but I have no idea what they are. Power settings. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's see. Soldering settings. This looks like you, go, you cycle through menus and then that would be to go into the menu. So we'll go through the menus. Sleep mode. User interface. That might be where we can change the settings. Advanced settings. User interface might be where we can change the Fahrenheit Celsius settings. Language is English. We're back to the beginning of whatever this is. And it was counting down. I guess that might be like a countdown timer. Yeah. All right. So it went into operating mode. Let's turn it off again. All right, she's off. Hold down the plus key, turn it on. She's on, let's go into the menus. Power settings, power source, QC voltage, PD timeout. That's what's in the power settings menu. I don't know what that is. <laughs> power source DC. Power source 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S, DC. I'm just going to leave that at DC. QC voltage 9, 9.2. I'm not using QC. I'm using PD. I'm going to get that back to 9. All right, you can hold it down and it'll zoom in on its own. PD negotiation timeout. Oh, it'll even tell you what it means. So there's your PD timeout setting. That's nice. This is actually very well done inside here. It would be nice to be able to go in reverse direction but that's okay. All right, there's power settings, soldering settings, boost temperature to 420, startup behavior, zero degrees, temperature change short is one, temperature change long is 10, allow locking buttons, sleep mode, let's go into the sleep mode, motion sensitivity is seven, and zero is off, and one is least sensitive, so as you go up to seven, it'll be the highest. Well, as you go up, up in numbers, it'll be the highest. And if I bump my desk, it'll wake up. Sleep temperature is 150, so it doesn't cool all the way down, just down a little bit. Sleep timeout, 50 seconds. So after 50 seconds of not moving, it will go into sleep mode. And then after 10 minutes, it'll turn itself off. That's nice. I did it again. Sleep mode, user interface. Let's go into user interface. Temperature unit. Display orientation, automatic, cooldown flashing, scrolling speed, swap keys, animation speed, animation loop, screen brightness, invert screen, boot logo duration, detailed idle screen, detailed solder screen. Let's go back into user interface, and I want to change that 
to Fahrenheit. Now it's in Fahrenheit. Advanced settings. Let's see what's in advanced settings. No power limit. I like it. Calibrate CJC at next boot. Calibrate input voltage. Power pulse 0.5. What is power pulse? Let's wait. Intensity of power of keep awake pulse watt. Okay. Power pulse delay 4. Power pulse duration 1. Restore default settings. Excellent. I did it again. That's my mistake. Language English. And then we're back to the main screen. It shows that we are ready to start soldering. All right, this thing has a ton of customizations in it too. I like it. Those menus are fantastic. I know earlier when I said, let's see if we can break it, you thought I was talking about the fuse kit. I got you covered. We're gonna go break that right now. We're starting out with a dead short plugged in directly to the car's battery. What Chris is gonna do in this video is have everything wired out in the driveway and then tap the lead to the battery terminal and watch it fry. We're gonna do 30 amps first. You will now hear the soothing sounds of the four cylinder. Fire extinguisher is still there and we're hooked up the car. We're just gonna try to hope we can pop the fuse and see what happens. Definitely heard a pop there. There's 30 amps and I popped that fuse and this fuse is still okay. I don't see any issues with the board. 30 amps just cooked right off. Let's do 40 amps. Here's the soothing sounds of the four cylinder again. And I will go attach positive to the battery and see what happens. Definitely heard a little pop there. So let's take a look. There's the failure point. It's hoping that would not happen. 40 amp fuse is still okay. Get her tested for you. Yep, 40 amp fuse is still okay, but we popped a trace. 40 amps, the board blew, but your radio did not blow. There is a YouTube channel that Chris has started. Be sure to go subscribe to that channel so you can get some more updates on this. There will be links for the solder, the soldering iron that I used to use, the soldering iron that I'm now going to be using going forward, and the fuse kit in the description down below. Make sure you check those out. There's a video right here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.